Hello and welcome to class. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how bioresonance and Rife technology actually works because when I say you can hook yourself up to a machine that you can buy and use from your own home and it can really help you with a lot of a lot of really tricky chronic illnesses, especially things like chronic infections, and you can do this from your from the comfort of your own home with a machine that you can buy and I can teach you to use. Sometimes that just sounds a bit too good to be true. So if I help you understand exactly what is going on, and as you can see here with these diagrams, we're going to get into some really interesting science so that you really understand how this machine actually works and how, how we can achieve the things that, that I say we can achieve. So firstly, the, the whole premise of all of this goes all the way back to, I would say it even goes back to Nikola Tesla's work. He would say, when you're thinking about anything, you always need to be thinking in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And anybody that knows who Nikola Tesla is, you know he's an absolute genius. 80% of electronics in your house are based on his work. Alternating current is based on his work. He, we wouldn't have smartphones. We wouldn't be anywhere near as technologically advanced as we are without him and his genius, genius brain. So think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. This is what gets everything started here. But then we move to Dr. Royal Rife. So he, he was, so he's a doctor and he used a lot of these kinds of principles that Tesla talks about in trying to understand health and, um, and medicine and how the body functions and how we can use energy, frequency and vibration to help the body recover from, um, infections, chronic illness, difficult things like cancers and things like that. He started off with, it was completely analog. He had this little machine, a frequency generator, and he would turn a dial and it would change the frequency that's being emitted from the machine. And I believe this all started because he was trying to find the resonant frequency of organisms. So every everything in this universe has a different resonant frequency. So you can think, so I know, I know what a lot of you are going to be thinking about when I'm when I'm talking about this, so I'm going to use examples that are applicable, very likely to you. So this is very common in use for resolving things like Lyme and Epstein-Barr virus, which are very difficult to, um, they're very difficult to tackle and they they can be really chronic and they can even hide on tests and it's really difficult to, to resolve these issues. And bioresonance and rife technology is, in my experience, by far the single best way we can approach it. So let's say, the Epstein-Barr virus resonates at a frequency of 5001. This is an example I use all the time. It doesn't, I don't know what frequency it resonates at. That doesn't really matter. But we just use this as an example. So it resonates at 501 hertz. So 501 cycles per second. So this is its resonant frequency. And what we're doing is we're applying this same kind of model as what's going on here. So I'm sure many of you have seen the sort of like the experiment, the demonstration where an opera singer can sing a certain note at a certain distance away from a glass. And if she sings it and puts a lot of, she's putting a lot of energy into the, into the note and she hits the resonant frequency of the glass, the glass just explodes. And she's, she's, she's really far away from it, like multiple meters. And it's literally the resonance and it's not just the power of the voice. You can use louder volume and it doesn't matter. It's because you've hit the resonant frequency. So this is the frequency that the glass vibrates at. So you hit that resonant frequency and it explodes. So what we do in the body is say we've got Epstein-Barr virus and it resonates at a frequency of 5001. We can apply that frequency, that resonant frequency, to charge the Epstein-Barr virus up with this with this energy through the machine which causes it to explode so a really good example is Lyme disease because ABV is a virus viruses aren't really alive but Lyme is a is a bacteria so they're actually living organisms and it's it's more interesting I actually have videos of organisms under a microscope being targeted with their resonant frequency and you can see them die under the microscope and it's really fascinating so if you'd like to see that let me know and I'll be sure to get that to you so we've got a little demonstration of what I was talking about there. So you've got, say this is Lyme, Lyme bacteria. It's just floating around in your, in your blood, wherever it's living. We apply the frequencies to it 
and it gets uncomfortable because we're charging it up with a lot of energy and it's uncomfortable. So it starts to wriggle, it starts to squirm, it wants to like get away, it's trying to escape, but it can't because it's inside your body and you're applying the frequencies to your body. And eventually what happens is it gets charged up with so much energy that it, it basically just pops. And you can see here, it's broken, it's cell wall has, has opened. And the thing is, all of the, the toxins and the smaller um, organisms that were living inside of it now leak out. So if Lyme was carrying lots of um, disease promoting molecules, maybe heavy metals, Epstein-Barr virus can actually live inside Lyme. So you could release loads of Lyme virus out of the bacteria and now you have to deal with that as well. As you can see, it's all caught kind of like spilling out. So you kill the Lyme disease, but then you still have to do this, this cleanup, which can be a bit of a mess. This is, this is sort of what's responsible for Herxheimer reactions. So this is kind of what's going on with the, with the killing frequencies. We apply the frequency of the, like the resonant frequency of the organism to the organism, which causes it to charge up and essentially explode. And I was already quite familiar with this model. I've known this for a long time. This is, this is something new that I learned because in the, in the machine, and I use, I use Spooky2 personally. Spooky2, I used to use the X, Generator XM. Now I use the Generator X, more powerful. It's, it's cool. It's really interesting. It's like, it's like a, a boy's toy upgrade. It's really, it's really nice. We talk about healing and the way that it works is through something called entrainment. So, We've got, I've got some examples here. We'll talk more about this specifically, but I want to give you some real life examples like the opera singer so you can put it into like practicality. So many people, especially the, the women that are watching, may have noticed that if you spend a lot of time with other women, your periods begin to sync up. You'll menstruate at the same time. And this is because the cells in your body have become attuned to the cells in the bodies of people around you. It's very common for larger groups of women, like 10, 12, that meet together because obviously if there's more women, there's going to be more influence. They're going to be um, harmonizing more effectively. They can actually begin to have their cycle at the same time. And this is a form of entrainment. And you can, you can see this with another example as well. So if you get grandfather clocks and you put them all in the same room. So a grandfather clock is like a, like a clock that has a pendulum that's swinging. So not like the quartz crystal that, that ticks like a, the the watch on your wrist kind of thing. It's like the older kind of clocks that, that have a pendulum that sort of swing like this. If you leave them all in the same room together, eventually those pendulums all swing in cycle. They reach the peak at the same point and they, 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 they harmonize. This is kind of what's happening when we're talking about entrainment. So you could say, here you've got the blue line. So this is the resonant frequency that a healthy cell should be, should be resonating at. But yours, say you've got I don't know, it doesn't really matter what it is, any kind of diseased cell is going to be resonating at different frequencies. So you see you've got this red line here. This, the frequency is increased because it's, it's resonating faster. And this might be unhealthy for this cell. With understanding how entrainment works, the bioresonance machine, I think this is more of a rife machine kind of thing, but most machines can kind of do both. So the machine applies a frequency that tries to bring your unhealthy cells closer to the healthy resonant frequency of that cell. And... As a result, the cell becomes healthier. You're in training it to become healthy, healthier again. There's one side of this that I don't understand. I'm still researching it, but this isn't really very well documented. If you hear about Nikola Tesla and Dr. Reif, their work is kind of suppressed. It, there's not a lot out there. It's very difficult to, a lot of it's hearsay, and it's very hard to get to the bottom of understanding these things, which is why I think it's important that I make this so that you can really have some understanding. But... You can run frequencies for um, pollutants, so mercury or arsenic, heavy metal kind of things, or pesticides, different kind of things that you've been exposed to. And you run the frequency programs for those, and it helps your body to eliminate them. Now, I'll be completely honest, I have absolutely no idea how it does that. At this stage, I'm still trying to find research on it, and nobody, no, I can't get any answers from anybody. But I can tell you, it works, because... I've been running these frequencies and they give me some serious, serious aches and pains, especially in my elimination organs. So my kidneys and my liver. Yesterday, yesterday night, I was running one of the, one of the frequencies and my, my, I was feeling my liver. It was felt enlarged and I was feeling it in my back. My kidneys were aching. It was absolutely crazy. And I, I, I honestly, I would love to tell you, I don't know. I'll be completely honest. I have no idea how it does that. 
So if you if you know, reach out to me and let me know because I'd love to share that with, with everybody else. But I don't know how that part works. But now we're going to move on to the, the scanning functions. So this is more the bioresonance aspect of it, especially the biofeedback. What we, what we can do is when, so we, we know that these organisms have certain resonant frequencies and we know that our cells have optimal resonant frequencies and they might not be resonating at those frequencies. We can run some different types of, of scanning. So the first type is biofeedback using heart rate variability. So when we're doing this, we have a heart rate monitor attached to our finger. I was just checking if I had mine, but I think I've packed it away. I don't use this very much. So you attach it to your finger. When you apply these different frequencies, so say you do have Epstein-Barr virus and it's a problem for your body and you run frequency 5001, your body will elicit a stress response. It will be documented by your heart rate. And this, this tells the machine this, this frequency is a problem. So whatever that frequency is associated to, it could be Epstein-Barr virus, it could be Lyme disease, it could be, I don't know, whatever, whatever the frequency was that said was a problem, there's a good indicator that that is an issue for you. Even more so than that is we can use, I think it's called a galvanic response. So this is with your sweat. So instead of using a heart rate variability monitor, you've got the, um, the bioresonance pads attached to your body and it tests based on your level of skin conductivity. So when you elicit a stress response, the conductivity increases because when you are stressed, it makes you sweat. So the conduction from the pads is, is easier. But when you move out of, para, out of sympathetic into parasympathetic, you elicit a relaxation response. So the um, conductivity reduces because you're moving towards uh, a rest state, which means that that frequency wasn't a hit. So th this in the traditional sense is biofeedback because we're looking for the body to give us a response. This is really good for one reason. We don't require any interpretation. The body is telling us what the problem is, so it's really great for that reason. But then we've got um, what what most people use now, especially with the Spooky 2 software, is we're testing for resistance. So instead of, instead of measuring the body's response, we're not looking for heart rate variability changes or changes in galvanic response. We're looking for changes in how easy it is for the Spooky to push the frequencies through your body. It's measuring resistance. If there's more resistance, it means there's more of the organism in the body. So say we're doing the same thing like with frequency 5001 and Epstein-Barr virus. When we try to push the frequency through the body, so through the pads, there's more resistance because it's having to go through more of these cells. So that's indicated on the machine. This, this has advantages and disadvantages. So the first advantage is we don't have to wait for a response from the body. So it's about 100 times faster. To do a full biofeedback scan of all the frequencies, you could literally be sitting there for a couple of hours, two, three, maybe four hours to do it, to do it the traditional heart rate variability or skin galvanic response way. And also those, those don't work sometimes. If you have a heart condition or you have really low heart rate, the heart rate variability isn't going to work very well. And if you can't sweat, a lot of people that have toxins accumulated, they can't sweat the galvanic response isn't going to be very accurate. So there's a, there's a reason those two don't work sometimes. But with this, we're not actually asking the body what the problem is. We're not getting biofeedback from the body. The body's not telling us what the problem is. Mm -hmm. It's just saying what the resistance is. So you may have high levels of a certain organism. That doesn't necessarily mean that organism is actually the problem because sometimes the body employs organisms to do jobs when you're in a state of disharmony or imbalance. So say you have a lot of mercury exposure, sometimes your body will elevate levels of leak, of yeast. So you could run this scan and it says there's a lot of resistance to yeast organisms. That doesn't necessarily mean yeast is actually the problem because it could be the mercury, the yeast have moved in to eat the mercury for you. And this is why one of the um, strongly recommended procedures that you, that you use, especially when getting a spooky, is they come with something called the terrain protocol. So the terrain protocol is a, a pre-made set of frequencies. It actually takes 11 days to run through the whole procedure. You can use Spooky Remote, and this is quantum entanglement. We're gonna, I'll talk about that in a minute, because that's a, that, if this hasn't blown your mind yet already, then that is just gonna, you're gonna have to click off, because you're just gonna think I'm an absolute quack. So, so getting back to it, um, <laughs> it's blown me. Spooky, uh, spooky action at a distance is just, I'll talk about it in a minute, it's absolutely unfathomable. So when we, when we're using this, um, terrain protocol. We 
we're basically just removing things from the body that we already know are harmful to it. So for the most part, it's about removing chemicals like, like pesticides, agricultural chemicals, food additives, heavy metals like mercury. Like these are very well documented as being very carcinogenic and ill health promoting. So it's about like clearing the lymphatic system, supporting kidney, liver function so that we're able to detox when we do kill these organisms. And it's about putting the body in a better state of health so that it's able to handle the onslaught of killing organisms that's, that's to come. And usually by doing this, we rid the body of all of these different toxins. So say it's mercury, say it's mycotoxins, and an organism has moved in to consume these things for us. If we get rid of the, the mercury or whatever the problem is that's causing the overgrowth or dysbiosis, the numbers come down naturally because we've removed the reason the body was using them. And now they do, they are potentially pathogenic because we don't need them to be there anymore because we've eliminated the, the source of the reason that they were there. So then having a high load of them is a problem. So it does show up as actually a problem that we need to fix. Like I said, this does require more of an interpretation, more of a, you really need to think about it from a more holistic perspective and not just this number's high, this is the problem. This is one of the biggest problems I have with other testing like um, stool tests. It, it doesn't give you the whole picture. Bioresonance is flawless because you're asking the body's wisdom and the body's always right. But when we're doing the the sort of the resistance approach, the, the secondary approach down here, it's, it's different. It's way faster. It's like 10, 100 times faster. So it's, it's good for that reason. If you do this kind of thing and it aligns with results that you already have from biofeedback, from heart rate variability or sweat, you can't go wrong. You know that both of them have indicated that these were a problem and that's where you need to focus with the machine. So then you would be applying those frequencies over more extended periods of time to um, to resolve them, basically. So now I want to talk about spooky action at a distance. I, I, I didn't know why the device that I used was called Spooky 2 until I started to understand what spooky action at a distance was. I believe it was Einstein, could be wrong, I believe it's Einstein, he coined this term because he, it kind of blew his mind, so again, it's going to blow yours. So it's all about quantum entanglement and how a particle that is connected to another particle anywhere in the universe, if you do something to one, the same thing happens to the other. So a good example is, and this is what happens in this machine. There's these little, um, I don't know really how to describe them. They're called spooky remote. It's kind of like a little sample, a sample holder. And you basically put a sample of your DNA in the sample holder. So you can use a toenail, you could use blood, you can use skin. It doesn't matter as long as it's got your DNA. I've heard some people even use a picture of somebody because the universe is smart and you put that in there, it knows that you mean that person. The universe is imbued with the same intelligence as your body. So. Again, if it's too quackery for you, yeah, I know, I get it. It took me a little while to warm up to this. The only reason that I warmed up to it was because I was like, there's no way that could work. So I tried it, put my toenail in the uh, in the thing, applied the frequencies to me, and then when my liver and kidneys are hurting the next day, I'm like, oh God, it really did do something. It really does work. Haven't tried the putting a, like a picture of yourself in there and seeing if it works. That's my next experiment. So we'll see how that goes. But what's happening is this DNA is, that's in your, in your toenail is quantum quantumly entangled to you. So anything that's applied to any of the frequencies that you apply to that toenail can be applied to you, no matter where you are in the whole universe. You could be on the moon, you could be on Mars. It doesn't matter. It's applying to your DNA and it's in the quantum field. So it's like above space and time. So it doesn't matter where you are, it's doing it. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty out there. And like I said, I didn't believe it until I tried it. So <laughs> it, was really a, it really is something to wrap your head around. So you can then, so say you do the biofeedback scan, or so you do the heart rate variability, or you do the resistance test, whatever it is. You do the scan, then you know what the problem is. Sure, you can sit down and apply those frequencies physically through the generator. So you can attach like a TENS pad to you and run it through your body. Sure, you can do that. Or you can use quantum entanglement. So you use the spooky remote. You attach your, you put your toenail in the, or toenail, fingernail, DNA, doesn't matter. Nails work really well though, because they're, they're not messy. It's really hard to get hairs in there. So nails work really well. You can use it anywhere. So you don't even have to be near the machine. I can I could do this and I could go and fly to Australia and it would still be affecting me because I'm quantumly entangled with it. So it's absolutely mind blowing. And I know it works because I've done it. So if you trust me, trust me, it works. <laughs> so I, I think that pretty much covers all of this. Let me just have a look. Yeah, this pretty much covers everything that I wanted to detail. If this is something that you're interested in and you've never you've never heard about this yet, I definitely suggest that you check out this course that I'm working on. 
in the academy. It's, it's going to have um, hardware installations, software, how to operate the software, how to do all of these things that I just mentioned. So we're going to go over how to do biofeedback with heart rate variability. I'll be honest, I don't know how to do the sweat response yet, but that's something I'm looking into. The, the resistance model, how to do entrainment so you can make your cells healthy again. And I know how to do the terrain protocol, really, really cool. And how to do this killing. So do the biofeedback scan and then apply the killing frequencies to destroy the organisms that are basically making you sick. So I really hope that you've, that you've found this class interesting. And now if you have any questions about it, let me know. Post in the Health Potion Facebook group. That would be your best place to get a response. So uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.